Good morning. Uh, I believe we are live now. Uh, we're gonna go over into prayer a bit. I just want to hear what what is the needs for prayer. And before we start with our Bible study, we will officially start with the Bible study just at eight o'clock. But for now, just log in with us in prayer. If you are there, just notify us that you are there. Um, I don't see us on the page. We're definitely not live here. So unless you are on Carly's... Uh, mm, no, I'm on actually, no. Just takes a few minutes, seconds. Let's just look for that. Refresh the page. Ah, we are live, indeed. Okay. I can't say yes. <coughs> So, so welcome. So, so. <coughs> um, so, from our side, we are not just so. Our heart is for you, but also as we begin to enter, not for people in prayer. We are for you entering. If there is anything that is for us, I want to talk specifically about. Pastoors vriend van ons, ou Arras, daar in Witbank, wat op die oomlik COVID ook het. Ons gaan vir ons om ook net so vinnig bid. Ek denk aan Dad Angus, om Angus, en dan Jill, hulle twee wat ook op die oomlik siek is. Maar meer as dit in spuite van die siekte, ek is my bekommernis nie so veel teen oor die virus, en my bekommernis is meer op die ekonomiese vlak, where I believe that the enemy has been trying to attack the church, and where I believe that God wants us to, to visualize and see that um, he wants to do something new, the church is going to have to be open to innovate in this season and also to, to trust in the Lord for, for new things. Amen. And the only way we are going to be able to survive it is to say, Lord, speak to us concerning the world system that's out there now and what will your will be in this next season. I believe that there's a lot of things that's going to change. I believe that um, the not the church, us as a church, mm -hmm. but the global body of Christ is under attack. Amen. I don't believe that the virus is the biggest threat. I don't believe. I think it's one of the fruits of the attacks that that, that is busy happening. Mm -hmm. I believe this this is the signs of some of this is some of the signs of the end time. I believe that there's definitely the kingdom of um, hell and Hades that's busy um, trying to attack the church because of the promise for this next season. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the season of harvest. But every time the enemy came up with a strategy and a plan, he was wrong. If you look at what happened in, in, in the life of Jesus, the devil thought he had the overhand over Christ and he was busy executing the plan of God uh, or, or eliminating the plan of God. And then the next moment he executed it. He, he walked perfectly into it. So as a church, we don't need to fear. We don't need to wonder if God's got a different card up his sleeve or he's, God's got his plan, uh, his plan A. He's going to do what he's going to do. He's going to be faithful. And we as a church are going to come in agreement with what God is doing. God's not going to do what we would like him to do. He's God. We're going to come in line with what God is doing in this season. And one of the things is that you don't need to be too much to, um, stressed up. The, the other night I was struggling to sleep just concerning fighting in my heart and in my spirit with everything that's going on from, from ideas of the Antichrist. And, and the Lord just came and comforted me in the morning hours and said to me, you know what, everything's going to be fine. I'm going to give you a wisdom and an understanding that surpasses the knowledge of this earth. And I will be with you, guiding and directing you, going left and going right. And I said, Lord, what about my sons? And the Lord said to me, I gave you a promise for, and it's for you and for your sons. It's for this next generation. So you don't need to fear. We're not going to go over into fear. We're going to go over into a total, in, in with a total agreement of what God is doing in the season. Amen. And I want to tell everyone that's praying, I, you need to pray for the church. You need to pray for our church leaders. You need to come in agreement with the body of Christ. You need to get your nose in the Word. In this time that you are off, spend time in the Word of God so that you will be led by the Spirit. Amen. Spend time in prayer, spend time in praying in tongues and seeking God's face. Not out of fear because you, you, you know, you, you're wondering what's, God, what's going to happen. It's because of a reverence towards the Lord that I want you to do these things, that there would be such a deep conviction of the truth of, and the knowledge of the gospel inside of your heart, that nothing will shake you. 
The Bible says we've got a kingdom that's not, that can't be shaken. Um, so we don't get shaken by all these things. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. And the church is going to survive this one. We're going to ride it out and we're going to see the glory of God. We're going to see people get sick inside the church. We're going to pray for them. They're going to get healed. Amen. We're going to see how people are going to change their minds it can, it, um, to, towards the economy. And we're going to see how God's going to do a significant thing. And I want you this morning just to come in agreement to understand that there's no fear in the heart of the believer. Because there's nothing, no plan that the enemy can bring up that will prosper. There's no plan that he can bring up that can destroy us. And I saw the Lord saying to me that this is the time of the wise, the, the, ten, um, the ten virgins. There was five that was wise. They were filling their lamps continually with oil because they expected the coming of the bridegroom. But then there was the rest of the church that saw everything as being comfort. The church is not called to be a, a pleasure boat or a comfortable boat. It is called to be a, a boat that goes out on the ocean and that saves lives. The, the whole idea of the church is not so much to bring us into comfortable circumstances, but to, to be in a place where we need to call out and to praise God because we are so dependent on his, the next breath that we take. And that's where the church, when the church is living on the edge, not that we've got everything figured out and everything right. I didn't, I didn't perceive this. I couldn't see this coming. I couldn't see that we were going into a lockdown. And I said to the Lord, Lord, it troubles me. Why didn't you speak? Your word says you speak to the prophets. And the Lord says, but you were busy with your own agenda, busy with your own things. And in this season, I said to the Lord, Lord, I want to repent. I want to be busy with your agenda. Amen. We've been building churches and busy planning and doing a lot of things. But I believe that there's a day that, that, needs, a day that needs to happen where the church is back on the breath of God, where the Ruach of God, the Spirit of God, will drive us to continue and to do things far beyond what we've ever thought. Um, I sat with the Lord and the Lord showed me the vision. I said to the Lord, Lord, what about all these prophetic words this year? This is the year of harvest. This is the year of promise. It's a new season. And you'll remember last year I spoke about the eye. We, we, we concluded with the dispensation of the eye. And we've just gone into the season of speaking. So we're going to speak and align ourselves into the word of God. And we're going to do what this dispensation has been called to do. We're going to be the body. We're going to be the, the, the mouth in this season. We're going to declare things, call things that's not as if they are. We're going to um, see things happening. And I want to tell you what's happening is that there's a, a two, two camps. There's the camp of Pharaoh and there's the camp of Israel. There's the church and there's the enemy. And in this season... I believe that God wants to do something so significant. The Lord showed me 2020. The, the field is equal. Mm. It's depending on those who's going to step out. It's equal ground. Mm. And who's going to take the ground for this season. Mm. And I said to the Lord, Lord, we're in the beginning of this year still. I can't see that we're going to lose this battle at the beginning. Mm. And the Lord said to me, well, it's depending. The earth is waiting with eager expectation for us mm. to change the circumstances change what we see by what we speak before there was anything seen things were changed by words by the mouth of god when god started speaking and we're going to speak live even as we're going to pray now for a few minutes uh, we've, we've got 15 minutes to pray we're going to pray now and we're going to ask god to change our things so i want you to come in agreement um, if there's anyone Marshal, uh, we are taking ground amen brother um, just tell us what we are praying for in this season, because I would love just to come and agree with you. Uh, Irina, welcome. Mori Buerta, welcome. Irma, now you're watching. Welcome. Um, and this morning, I want to pray with you and come in agreement. If you're sick, I want to pray for that. If you are, are, are stressed up about your fi finances, I want to pray for it. If there's anything wrong, notify us. We would love as a body of Christ to come in agreement that the corporate prayer would change your life. You see, where two or more gather in my name, there's no distance in Christ. But where we come in, 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 in one heart and in one action, we are not separated in spirit. There, there where you are, God is with you. And even as we pray, the effect of our words will change the atmosphere, will change what's going on. In, literally in the spirit. Um, the one thing that the enemy is trying to disrupt at this stage is the churches coming together. I believe, I listened to a guy speaking yesterday, I believe and I agree 
that the church's voice is disrupting the plans of the enemy. Amen. So if he needs to dismantle what's going on, the main thing he needs to do is to get the gathering of the saints to get them apart. Guys, I can't wait to gather again. Amen. I believe we, we, we need to gather again. We need to get together again. We need to go and see that God's going to do something so significant in this season. Amen. And it will not be because of fear. It will be because of a, a reverence towards the Lord. Amen. A deep expectation saying, Lord, we believe and that's final. Lord, thank you. Your grace is sufficient for us. So, Father, this morning we come in the name of Jesus and we declare, Father, that there's a hopeful future for each and every one of us. Father, I want to stand in this hour with, with our brethren all across and all abroad. I'm praying for my friends and my family in India. I'm praying for my family in New Zealand, Lord. I'm praying for, for the brothers in Christ in Russia. I'm praying, Lord, for our friends in Germany and in the United States. I'm praying for the people in Italy. I don't know people in Italy, but I'm praying for them, Lord. I'm praying for my, my brothers in South Africa. I'm specifically praying now in the name of Jesus for that Angus and for Tony Jordan, Lord, that this effect of the virus, it came up to them, but it has no right. It's got no legal right because of the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I pray now for Andres there in Whitbank, Lord, and we come in agreement and we declare, Father, that your word is nullifying the Amen. effect you, of this virus in their body, that there will be no symptoms, nothing will come and, and happen in their life. Father, I want to come in the name of Jesus and I want to pray for people in this time that is stressing about their finances, that, that is concerned of what needs to happen. And Father, we want to pray and just ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you are changing people's hearts. Father, we will not live from bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from your mouth. Amen. So Father, we are leaning back on the word of your mouth. I ask for a clarity in the spirit concerning the prophets, that the Amen. prophets will be in season with their words, Amen. that the prophets will discern God's word in this season. I pray for the prophets, Lord, that is connected to this house. I'm praying for, for prophet um, Amelia. I'm praying for prophet Joe and Marie. I'm praying for prophet Andre Kilo and for prophet, prophet Andre Bronkos, people that's connected to our ministry. And I ask, Father, that there will be a guidance past the Ed crowd, Prophet Ed, we are praying for you. Amen. And we ask, Lord, that this in this season that there will be a clear-cut word of the prophetic so that we will discern. I pray for, for Prophet um, uh, 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 Chuck Day and for a lot of these other prophets, Father, that you will speak to them in this season. I pray for the apostolic to come to the front. Father, for the apostolic, the awe of God upon my life and in other people's lives, that the apostolic will be in our hearts, Amen. that we will rise up to this occasion, Father, when the church is being threatened, the apostolic always gave us clear direction Amen. because there was no fear in our hearts. Amen. So, Father, I ask, Lord, that the, the evangelical mantle will be loosened upon the church. This is a time of opportunity, Father. Let neighbor reach out to neighbor, Father, because we know, Corona, you have no right. You have no legal right on anyone that serves God. And that's why I just want to come in agreement with the prophetic that's been loosened in this season, that there will be action, that when we speak, everything will, will, will change. Everything will, will change before our eyes. People will recognize that God is faithful and that he's in control. Father, in this morning, I want to honor you because the word says that you are the truth, the way, and the life. And Lord, apart from you, Father, there's nothing. So Lord, I pray now in the name of Jesus, Father, that things are changing all about us, all about the church. I want to ask, Lord, for a wisdom and that there will be an end like in the day of Acts, that daily that people will come in. I saw a testimony about a guy yesterday that was sick and a cleaner came. And spoke to him and shared with him the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ and prayed for him. Sure. Yeah. And this cleaner was a missionary down in Tanzania or something like that. And as he prayed, the guy's symptoms immediately started turning. And all of a sudden, this guy accepted Jesus. He's weeping out of a reverence, out of thank you, God, that you came and met up with me. And more than that, then he asked the Lord, Lord, he's, he, he, needs, he wants a Coke and a packet of chips. And the next moment, the next morning, the cleaner came back and he brought him a Coke, an orange and a packet of chips. That's the goodness of God, even more than what you have asked. Amen. So, Father, in this time, I want to be.
be in a place where I just want to call on the name of the Lord because we need to be saved. Thank you, Father, that your arm hasn't become short, that you haven't um, uh, lost hope, that you, have, that you can see clearly the promises that you have for us in this season. And Father, we just want to interact with the promises of God for this season. I want to ask, Lord, that there will be an enlightenment and an awakening of the heart of the children of Christ. That people's hearts will turn to seek your ways. And Father, I want to pray for my own heart. I don't want to pray and measure other people. I want to pray for my own heart. Lord, I pray for the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to bring revival in our hearts, in my heart. I want to ask, Lord, that there will be an awakening of your, of your joy, of your love, of your peace, and that we will have sound minds in this season. So, Father, I loosen over us and over our territory, not only your grace, not only your health, but, Father, just the joy of the Lord that will be our strength. Thank you, Father, even in this morning, I ask that families will be reunited, that people will experience the joy of God that leads them to repentance. And, Father, that there will be nothing outstanding on our accounts that we will realize it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Um, so if there's anyone that wants prayer, just tell us. Uh, we're looking on the Facebook account. You can pray. Amen. I'm just experiencing the word that says that and when Jesus came out of the wilderness, he was tired and, and angels came and ministered unto him. And Lord, I just want to pray that, Lord. I pray, Father, that you, that you release your angels, Father, your ministering angels, Lord. Uh, uh, your servants of fire, Lord. I pray, Father, that you will just release them over every every person that is tired, weary, uncertain in this season, Lord, that they'll come and minister unto us, Lord, to pick up our hearts, to give us vision, Lord, just to come and, and refresh our spirit, Father, as as you refresh the spirit of Jesus in the time of the wilderness, God, so that it will release us into the next season of, 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 of our ministry, signs, wonders, and miracles, Lord. I pray, Father, that that they were temptation is, Lord, they were the enemy strikes, God, that, that we will, as Pastor Matthias says, fall back on your word, Lord, and just uh, uh, not be passive, Lord, but take your word and, 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 and attack back, Father, to say to the enemy, but this is what the word says, this is what the word says, this is what the word says. So, Lord, I pray, Father, just for utter obedience in this season, Lord, every single guy that's hearing, that, that, that their ears will be so open to, to go with the leading of your Holy Spirit, Jesus, to to really do nothing apart from what they see the Father do. Come reveal to us as a church, reveal to us as a global church, reveal to us as Christians, God, what are you busy with, God? Because we don't want to do anything from apart from what we see you are doing in the season, Lord. So I pray, Father, right now, God, that you'll open our eyes, our ears, so that we can see exactly what you are busy with in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And that you will only do what you tell us to do and nothing else, nothing more, nothing less, God. Only be obedient to what you tell us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, even this morning, Lord, Thank you, Jesus. as we are so aware, as we are so aware, Father, of your goodness, I just want to come and commend your word in this season. In this season. Amen. Father, thank you, Lord. I pray for open eyes, for an open spirit, for an open heart. In this season, to discern your promises. Amen. In Jesus' name. Um, I just want to share this morning, even what the words what come up to um, up is that the thing is usually we hear the word, but we don't really do it. As what we think is what we become, and I just felt this most of the moms is have a lot of fear because you have children at home and don't be fear, don't have fear, don't be afraid because I know the Lord is protecting us. I mean, I have four children at home and I know the children protect, um, is protected and we do communion every day, do communion, pray for your children and take oil and um, anoint them. And the thing is, I know the Lord has a word over you, so preach that word over your children and Amen. proclaim it and the prophetic is stronger than anything. The Amen. devil won't come in. The devil won't do anything. Yes, so I believe that, and I'm all. I'm also afraid. I mean, I, I mean, I listened to a preaching, a sermon, a sermon yesterday, and the guy says, "If you're not afraid, I mean, you're like a robot. I mean, really, fear comes in, and then you just say, fear, go away.' So proclaim 
and do it. I mean, no one is going to hear you if you're going to shout. Just shout. I mean, I think someone's going to say, okay, that they have an argument or something. But I mean, that's the good thing. We do worship. We put a worship on. Let the people hear next to you. Let the, the neighbors hear you. Amen. That's the that's the best thing to do because then they will see what the Lord do in your house. Absolutely. So I just want to tell you and um, yeah, my English is not very good. I'm a Bura Afrikaans lady, but yeah, I want to <laughs> just pray for you and what we pray this morning. We pray for you, and I mean, please send us WhatsApps and um, send on the um, acts on the Facebook. Let us know if there's anything what we can pray for you, because we really do that for you. Amen. 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 While we conclude this um, this prayer session, I'm going to go over into to the Bible study. Um, but while we conclude this prayer session, my wife just spoke about the fear in people's hearts. And it's so real in this season um, that what we fear will, will, will become its slaves. Yeah. And in this season, as we are entering into the time where God has always done something significant in the church and in Israel, over the, 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 the uh, past over time, we are entering this season where God spoke and He said, Let my people go and worship. And I want to come this morning and I want to tell you that fear will have no effect. We are no longer slaves uh, of fear because we are sons of God. Remember that song that came out? God released it in the heavens that we would make a declaration so that in this season we will be able to take up and battle with the same idea. So if you feel insecure and you're afraid, it's fine. And admit it because grace... Is the thing that God gives you to overcome. He gives you the supernatural ability mm. to say, Lord, I'm feeling fearful in this season. Mm. I felt anxious the other night when I prayed and I said, Lord, this seems like the time of the Antichrist. And I'm afraid I've got young sons. They're not at that point where they can fight and fend for themselves. So they need me. And I, I need to be either with my family or I need to be doing your work. And I feel a burden for both. I feel a burden for the church. And in this sense, I heard the Lord telling me and saying, but if you are an earthly dad, seems to be good to your children, how much more will I not be good for you and for your children? Mm -hmm. So I want to tell you in this time, I don't have all the answers. I don't have so much um, wisdom and everything figured out that I can give you all this words of knowledge. But what I do know is that in this season, even in this time where I feel afraid, we feel insecure, we're going to call upon the name of the Lord and we're going to ask the Holy Spirit for clear vision and for clear instruction and for guidance. So as we go and we, 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 we enter, we will hear people dying. We will hear of people that we love. But in this, the effect of it can be that they take people away from, from, from our beloved Jesus. So what I believe what's going to happen is, is this is going to motivate us. This attack is going to put us into an organized praise session. It's going to take us into a, a, a next level of the wave of God because when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise the standard. And this is raising the standard season. So I want to challenge you just there where you sit. Just place your hand on your heart. Holy Spirit, I pray for wisdom, discernment. I pray for a clear mind. Father, I'm going to ask in the name of Jesus that people's hearts will be bold as lions. Mm. That every fear will be, be broken down and that we can see and discern in this season that it's the hand of God that's going to lead people to repentance. Thank you, Father, that you have given us a word that will not fail us in this season because your Bible promised that it won't return back void and that this word of Jesus Christ is established and it's firm for us in this season. So Lord, I praise you in this time and I, I glorify the name of Jesus over this house, over this country, over this province, Lord. And I say in the name of Jesus that there is hearts that is expecting a next move. Every time we confront it, we come back to the name of Jesus and we declare that he is and was and shall be. Everything is for him, to him and about him. And because that is our confession, Lord, the Bible says that know him in all your ways and he will straighten the path. So, Father, I ask for people's paths to be straightened. Heart, hear the word of the Lord. 
I confess that the name of Jesus is your portion and that you are more than a conqueror and no fear will, will come onto our, our heart. We will continue on this path. We will believe and we will even grow holier and greater in this faith because of your grace. Heart, hear the word of the Lord. Be strengthened and be guided by the leading of the Holy Spirit in this season and know that God is for you and no one can be against you. In the, in the precious name of Jesus. I greet you. We're going to stop this session now. And then we're going to go over into uh, the Bible study. Thanks for joining us. We, we are starting immediately with the Bible study. We love you. Have a brilliant day. Amen. Amen.